Hello everyone. I was recently called in to take a look at a tree that had died very suddenly in this beautifully landscaped garden. The leaves of the tree, it was a Celtus Africana, had suddenly gone yellow and soon afterwards the tree had died. This set alarm bells ringing for me uh, because I've been watching trees and shrubs all around me over the last years, all just dying suddenly one by one. I had a suspicion that the cause was a tiny invasive beetle that's wreaking havoc on trees all around South Africa, Israel and the US. It's literally going to cause the death of hundreds of thousands of trees around South Africa over the next few years. It's a huge, huge problem. In this video, I'm going to run through how you can identify this beetle and the signs that it's in your tree. I'll also give you advice on how to treat it. Sure enough, when I took a closer look at the stem, I noticed these tiny little holes all over the tree. The beetle is called Euolacea fornicatus and it's an exotic Asian ambrosia beetle. It's originally from tea plantations in Sri Lanka. And what makes it particularly deadly is not actually the beetle itself, but the fact that it essentially farms a fungus as a food source inside the tree. And this fungus, Fusarium, which then spreads throughout the tree's conductive tissues, eventually starves the tree to death. Euolacea fornicatus is otherwise known as polyphagus shot hole borer. And I'm really, I'm not sure which is more of a mouthful. It's referred to as PSHB to make it easier. Has so far infected more than 200 plant species around the world and could potentially be one of South Africa's biggest ecological disasters. It was originally identified in the Peter Maritzburg Botanical Gardens in about 2017, but I suspect it's been around for far longer than that. I've noticed odd trees dying off with what looks like fusarium wilt for at least a decade, and I'll explain what that is just now. It's quite hard to spot PSHB because the actual insect is really small. It's about two to three millimeters long, and it's about a millimeter wide. It's dark brown or black, and you can usually spot their entrance and exit holes, which are about a millimeter wide and can sometimes look like the tree has been shot with a, a shotgun, albeit with tiny shot. You can sometimes see tiny wood frass coming out of the holes and you can actually see resin around the hole. Fusarium wilt is one of the final signs before the tree is about to die. And, and this is basically when the leaves of the tree either, they, they, they usually start to look like they haven't been watered in a while. They start to droop, they go yellow, and then they drop their leaves. And this happens quite quickly. They sometimes look like a very windswept tree that has lost leaves on the tips. Unfortunately, treating it is tough because you need to deal with both the insect and the fungus at the same time. At the moment, the only registered fungicide is by Pan-African Farms, and I'll include a link to their website below. Its active ingredient is organic. It's actually salicylic acid, which is what our aspirin is made from, which incidentally comes from the salix or the weeping willow tree. So next time you take an aspirin, remember where that comes from. Often it's too late to save a tree and to prevent the spread to other trees in your garden, it's best to cut down the tree and get rid of it as quickly as possible. But again, this is no easy task. The right way to deal with it is to cut it up into small pieces, put it into sealed bags and transport it in a tarp or, or something thick that will contain them as they come out of the cut pieces. The branches and the cuttings should either be ground into smaller than 20 millimeter pieces or solarized, which is essentially leaving it under a tarpaulin with the sides tucked in for six to eight weeks, which will then cook the insects. Burning should only be done in a contained environment, so don't, don't be tempted to do that because the females will often sense the heat and they'll fly away. All equipment that's come into contact with the plant material has to be sterilized to prevent the spread of the fusarium fungus to healthy plants. So if you suspect a tree has PSHB, then get hold of an expert in your area to properly identify it and get rid of it. I'll include a link to other resources below. If you found this video helpful, please share it with others so that we can raise awareness and get eyes on the ground to, to better deal with this devastating little insect and save our trees. Also, check out some of the other videos on the channel and I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe if you aren't already. Feel free to drop me a message if you have any questions that you want answered or any particular videos that you'd like to see. Otherwise, happy gardening. 